This is a CBS News special report. The flight of Apollo 8. Brought to you by... Western Electric, manufacturing and supply unit of the Bell System, as part of their continuing coverage of important news events. Here from the CBS News Space Center in New York, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good morning from our CBS News Space Center in New York. What a dramatic morning this is, and the drama has already begun. The flight of Apollo 8 is now on the far side of the moon, traveling 5,800 miles an hour. It just went to the far side about uh, three or four minutes ago, and just about a minute ago, it began firing that service. Drinkwater, uh, if you and Dr. Shoemaker could, could point to these points on the uh, moon there as uh, they're being described, perhaps we'll get a graphic picture of it as we hear from Jim Lovell. Back back up. Let's, uh, what we'll do is we'll take that tape again, Dr. Shoemaker. That was the end of that particular transmission. And we will uh, we'll take that tape again. And when we do, this time around, uh, We'll let you point to those spots on the moon. In about uh, 10 seconds, we'll be ready to go with that. I think languidness is the first uh, point that he was okay, trying to uh, The moon is essentially gray. No color. Looks like plaster of Paris. Okay, or uh, sort of a grayish beach sand. We can see quite a bit of detail. Uh, the sea of fertility doesn't stand out as well here as it does back on Earth. There's not as much contrast between that and the surrounding craters. Uh, the equator craters are all rounded off. There's quite a few of them. Some of them are newer. Understand. And that's the end of that uh, tape transmission. Uh, perhaps Dr. Shoemaker, on the next pass around the moon, uh, we'll, when we get those transmissions, we'll just follow them live, even as they uh, come up. You did that one so well, uh, you've won, uh, won your audition. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have, have you on the next round. Uh, it, uh, of course, this, to you astronomers, is uh, pretty much old hat. You're getting an exciting confirmation of what you've known. To most of us uh, laymen, we're learning a great deal about the moon with this flight, things that we're going to be living with now for the rest of our lives and for the lives of all generations to come, which is the really momentous uh, fact of this morning. This is the first story from the moon, uh, the first of the continuing history and legend of the moon, which will now become part of our uh, knowledge. The uh, uh, passage around the moon, you know, is the, the distance actually, uh, the circumference of the moon is about the same as the distance, I, as I recall, from New York to Berlin, uh, going eastward, uh, some, uh, what is it, 2,600 miles, is it, Dr. Shoemaker? Yes. Uh, and that's about the distance from New York to Berlin. That's the entire circumference around the moon. Uh, those of you who might have wondered why it takes uh, two hours to orbit the moon at 70 miles high, 
and it takes uh, only an hour and a half to orbit the Earth, as we learned in Mercury and Gemini, from around 110 to 30 miles high. Well, the fact is that the orbital speed uh, is a factor of the mass of the body that you are orbiting, uh, or you know, what we're saying is that it's a factor of gravity because mass determines the gravity. And the moon is has one-sixth of the mass, and therefore one-sixth of the gravity of Earth. A man on the moon will weigh one-sixth of what he weighs on Earth. When he walks along the moon, he'll actually bounce with giant strides because with the same amount of energy that he takes one three-foot step on Earth, he may take a 12-foot step on the moon. That's because of the gravity. Well, since uh, to get into orbit around a body, you have to balance gravity against speed, uh, it doesn't, you don't have to go so fast. To, uh, you can't go too fast uh, around a body with less gravity or you'd fly away again. So the speed around the moon is around 3,600 miles an hour and that takes two hours to get around. So the moon orbit will be two hours around rather than uh, around a hundred and, uh, 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 around an hour and a half for Earth orbit. The astronauts uh, we have had confirmed now from them are having their first breakfast in lunar orbit. And they are about to pass on the far side of the moon again. That uh, LOS or loss of signal will come in just about 10 minutes now. There will be further transmissions as they uh, disappear uh, behind the other side of the moon. We will be catching those, of course. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 8 will continue in a moment. Back here at CBS News Space Center, where this morning we have had the distinct privilege and excitement of reporting a man's first orbit of the moon. Man arrived at the moon this morning at 4.59 and fired off uh, the rocket that put the three American astronauts into orbit around the moon. And even the Russians who had so hoped to be the first to the moon have uh, been forced to congratulate uh, the United States, although in the first reports of yesterday as the American astronauts approached the moon, there were a few sour grapes, it seemed, in the reports of their leading uh, physicists and scientists. Uh, however, the congratulations were forthcoming as well. The spacecraft, the Apollo 8, now moving across the face of the moon as we see the moon from Earth, which means that they are in communication with the Earth stations. Uh, they're not at this particular moment because they are having breakfast at some 180 miles above the moon, the high point of their orbit of the moon, which is now egg-shaped and which will be circularized in another uh, two hours and 50 minutes. around uh, 9.31 or 9.30. Uh, the uh, first television transmission from the moon is expected to come on this next pass along the face of the moon. They will disappear around the uh, leading side of the moon as you look at it from Earth, uh, going around in that direction. They'll disappear around the leading side here in another uh, eight minutes. Then uh, they will reemerge and uh, approximately 35 minutes from then, then around 7.30, we should be getting the first television transmission from the moon. At that point, they will be around 150 miles above the surface of the moon. The high point of their egg-shaped orbit is uh, on this side of the moon, as we face the moon, called the Apocynthian. It's the apogee around the Earth, it's the Apocynthian around the moon. I think, uh, if I recall correctly, the reason it is that uh, is that uh, Cynthius is an old uh, uh, word for the moon. Uh, I don't know. Is that right, Dr. Shoemaker? No, 
Well, actually, aplocynthian is a general term for the high point in the orbit around any other oh. celestial body. Any other celestial body or any other orbiting celestial body? And it's the high point in an orbit for a small object going around a large object. In uh, other words, the, the moon then uh, has its aplocynthian and paracynthian in relation to the Earth. That is correct. Hmm. Well, I had one, one correct fact out of four there. That's not bad, I'm batting 250 on the ap paracynthian. At least the aplocynthian is the high point of the orbit of the uh, Apollo 8 around the moon. The paracynthian is the low point. And at this point, the low point is around 69 miles, and the high point is around 170 miles, uh, roughly, uh, those figures. And it will be circularized, as I say, a little bit later for a steady 70 uh, statute miles around the Earth.